How you doing? This is Ivan with Bite Size Wisdom for Busy People and I'm back with another idea to help you live more consciously. Today our topic is on the Law of Three. The Law of Three is an ancient teaching known to all the great wisdom traditions of the past. In esoteric Christianity it was known as the Trinity. In Indian teachings they were expressed in the three gunas of Tamas, Rajas and Sattva. The Law of Three can be used to explain how all manifestations happen at both the material and psychological level. They are the three forces of creation. So today we'll talk a little bit about why this is important for us at the practical level and for our self-development work. So for every manifestation or event, three forces must meet for its actualization. These three forces can be described as the active force, the passive force, and the neutralizing force, or as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in Christianity or Rajas for active, Thomas for passive, and Sattva for neutralizing force. These forces are found in the outer cosmos as well as the microcosmos within man. These are the creative forces of the cosmos. And the joining of these forces make up a triad. This triad will then go on to make another triad. So on the horizontal plane of time, this is what we call a chain of events, cause and effect, the important thing to know is that only one or two forces cannot create anything. All these forces must come together for a new creation to take place. So out of all the infinite possibilities at any given moment, only a few actually take place and that's when these three forces meet. For example, if an active or positive force and a passive or negative force meet, nothing happens as they simply just cancel each other out. But if a neutralizing force shows up and mediates and connects the other two forces, then an event or manifestation takes place. And from this result, a new triad may emerge. In this new triad, the neutralizing force of the previous manifestation then becomes either an active or a passive force. Science has long since identified positive and negative forces, but the third, the neutralizing force, is not really part of their distinct understanding yet. So as we can see, it is the neutralizing force that is necessary in order to bring into relationship the other two forces. We can also think of these three forces as the three wills that create. So from the absolute or unmanifest point of view, in the first order of creation, it is subject to three laws. And as the creation proceeds, it is under an increasing order of laws increasing in density as we get further and further from the unmanifest. As a practical example, let's take the simple act of baking a cake to illustrate these three forces. So we can take flour as being the passive force and heat as being the active force. If the flour and heat meet, nothing new will happen. Only when the neutralizing force of water shows up can they come into a proper relationship for something new to emerge, which is bread. And now this new manifestation, bread, can't be uncreated and return back to its original parts. Now let's look at it from a psychological point of view. When life is acting as the neutralizing force, then our personality will be what is active in us and our essence will be passive. This is the normal situation for man. As I have mentioned before on my channel, personality is what is most external to us. It is our identification with our conscious thinking mind. It is what has been shaped by our environment. Our essence is what is most real in us, what we brought into this world. And most adults don't have a working relationship with their essence, so they live purely from personality. And when we are on a real path of self-development, this relationship will change. Our self-development work will then become the neutralizing force in our life instead of the external shocks coming from life. Our essence then will become active and our personality becomes passive. In personality, we live a reactionary life. In essence, we are more responsive. When life acts as the neutralizing force, it is doing so in the horizontal dimension of time, of cause and effect. When our self-development work is the neutralizing force, then our essence starts to become more active. Since our essence is outside of time, we then open ourselves up to the vertical dimension of consciousness. 
these are the influences coming from above. As an example, someone who has been hypnotized is more in touch with their subconscious, therefore they are closer to their essence. So their usual sense of time is then completely distorted. Or when you go to sleep and your conscious thinking mind disconnects, time is no more in deep sleep. So it's important that we learn to identify and distinguish these three forces at a practical day-to-day -day level, which is to say we need to see them working in our inner psychological world. It is very difficult to see these forces and impossible if you aren't familiar with these ideas. But through genuine self-observation, as I have spoken about before on my channel, this is how we come to know and see these three forces in operation within us. We can then take the active or positive force as being what we want and passive or negative force as being what resists or prevents what we want. This is how we initially begin to observe the three forces within us. We will never be able to see the neutralizing force until we first see the active and negative forces within us. Anyone can understand this at a practical level if they have attempted any significant endeavor. Let's say when you set a goal, you need to account for the inevitable resistance that your goal will encounter in its journey to realization. Otherwise, your goal is impractical. Let's say you decide to fast and will not eat anything for the whole day. You would then be able to observe the passive force in connection with your aim. You would be able to observe everything within you that resists and opposes your aim. So try and see the active force first in order to see the passive force. It is the active force which makes the passive force appear because if you want nothing, then there's no passive force. This is important at a practical level because this asks us to really know what we want. Most people don't really know what it is that they truly want, so they are not aware of the active forces within them. So it can be useful from time to time and just ask yourself sincerely, what is it that I truly want? If we just pretend to want something and we really don't, this means we are just lying to ourselves. The three forces seen from the view of consciousness in relation to time, they can be described in the following way. Just being aware and conscious in the present, this is the neutralizing force. Being in the psychological past is the passive force and then being in the psychological future is the active force. All these examples can serve as material for your self-observation, which in time will give us a wealth of self-knowledge into the inner workings of our organism and our being. So today's video is just a small introduction into these three forces. Later, we'll get into much more subtler dimensions and we'll talk about how to purify them, how to work with them for our self-development. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'll revisit this topic in the near future. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please help me and hit the thumbs up, share with anyone who may enjoy my videos, and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload new content. And if you're new to my channel and want to learn more about self-observation, check out my essential self-development playlist on my channel. And until next time, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're doing well. I know there was a lot in this video. Um, if you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. Other than that, take care. Peace.